What's up, SE Nation? Welcome back to another video. So today we're talking about proposals. We're going to be talking about negotiation and handoff. And more importantly, what's the role of the sales engineer in it? Now, before we get too deep into that, in case you don't know me, my name is Ramzi Majraba. We have Scott here joining the call. Thank you for being here, Scott. And if anybody else shows up in the meantime, I would urge you to say hello in the chat and let me know you're here. I'm happy to have you. And I just enjoy talking about sales engineering and we're doing some advanced topics the last, I don't know, month here where we're covering the back end and the front end processes of sales engineering. I like to use my trusty whiteboard because I like whiteboarding and that's just something I do. So you've probably seen this by now. If you've been on any of these calls, you may have seen this. This is the sales cycle. So far, we've talked about a lot of different things. Luckily, hopefully they've been useful. But I'm talking about the back end and the front end. The back end is anything that happens behind the scene and the front end is everything, anything that's customer facing or things that we do to be customer facing. Uh, we talked about a lot of different things. We didn't mention the proposal here and the handoffs. So we're going to dig deep a little bit into that and see what the role is of a sales engineer in the proposal that's also customer facing. So let's, let's dig in, I guess. First off, let's just define what a proposal is. I looked it up just to be formal. I looked it up on chat GPT. I looked it up on, out on you on Google. The basic definition is it's a document, a business document, uh, where you're sharing with your clients from, from a vendor to a client in hopes of convincing them to buy from you. So the way I see it is a little bit different. I mean, it is a business document. It could be a document, but the proposal could be a presentation. I personally don't send the proposal. Uh, and when I worked with salespeople, they don't send a proposal without actually having a meeting set up. Right? We go and meet the customer and discuss the proposal. Right? So the proposal has many aspects, but uh, let's just talk. It's, uh, how, how would you define a proposal? Uh, proposal is, uh, let's go, a document or meeting where a vendor shares the specifics of, uh, of what they are to offer and what the client should expect. So especially in the technical world and in the sales world, the sales engineering world, we're telling the customer, you're going to buy this stuff. This is the result you should expect. And this is what you expect from us. These are the services, whatever. Right. And the proposal could be made out of like software. It could be made of services. Uh, it could be made of, of post sale support. Many customers purchase something, but they don't want to pay for post sales support. So that's part of the proposal. Now, wh why am I putting it here in the customer facing side? Well, the, the main reason I'm putting it in the customer facing side is in order to build a proposal, you've had to have the discovery calls, the demos and the proof of concepts. Basically as a sales engineer, so the sales engineer's role, collect information during all customer meetings and correspondence. Uh, correspondence. So what does that mean? We met the customer during the discovery phase, let's say. And this could be different from like, if you're working as a, a small to medium sized business SE which means it's more transactional 
and the salespeople, the, the product might not be complicated. So the salespeople can build a proposal on their own. But when you're talking enterprise, you're high, uh, longer sales cycles, SEs are more involved in the deals. And also SEs keep working with the customers after, after the deal is closed. So you get more meetings and now you're getting building, you're building relationships and now you're having water cooler talks. So anytime you meet a customer, you can, they can share some information with, with you, which you then have to use in the proposal. For example, um, one of the customers complained that the competitors didn't have enough support, right? So that means in the proposal here, you add And you, when, when you're doing the proposal, you say like, Hey, they need to have support. That's one of the things that they complained about. And we need to make sure we include it in the support. So a lot of, a lot of our job in the proposal is like intelligence gathering. And it's not, it's not done in a sneaky way or in a bad way. Usually the customers tell you that they require some form of support or the competitors is missing this and we need that or you're missing this and we need this from you. So you're building, you're building the relationships, you're collecting information throughout, right? So you're collecting information throughout, throughout the, I'm going to do this here. If you have any questions, by the way, if you're here and you haven't introduced yourself, please do that. I'd love to know who you are, where you're from and what you do and what you're hoping to get out of this call so that I can, since you've put in the effort to be on this call, I want to make sure I answer your questions. And if you have any questions, please make sure to leave them. So the SE will collect information throughout the sales cycle, all of it. Also, when we're doing the discovery and the demo and the POC, we have a good idea of what the products, like what specific features or SKUs as they are called in some places, part numbers that the customer will need to be able to use their stuff or their equipment. For example, let's say we're talking about Splunk. I don't know if anyone's familiar with Splunk, but it's a seam, uh, a security information gathering thing. Uh, let, let me check out what seam means for a quick second. Seam meaning, there we go. System information and event management. There you go. So what they do is they collect a lot of data into their, into their software. And then they allow the customers to actually analyze and look at and how they're, they charge people the, for the service or for the usage of the product is per gigabytes. Like how many gigabytes do you ingest? Or did you put it into the seam? So as a sales engineer, when I'm doing the discovery, I'm doing the demo, I'm doing the pre POV and POC, I can tell, like, I can figure out how many of these, uh, data, how much data they need. So I can figure out what the SKUs are. Part numbers, SKUs, products, whatever you want to call them. Products, etc. So we're collecting all this information, or we're we're kind of asking this information. Right? We're also we're also identifying we're sh we're sharing information with, with the salesperson about who is important in the room. In the room, room, room. Just to be clear, our job is not to build the proposal. As sales engineers, we do not build a proposal. That's the salesperson's job. I just, I want to make that, make sure that people are aware that our job is to help with the proposal. I can provide information to my salesperson that they can use in the proposal and in the negotiation. So who's important in the room as in who's our champion, who's going to come against us? What are some of the objections that they're going to share all that information 
will be available. And also, if we've done our job right, what is we can figure out what is valuable to the customer. I was talking to someone today, a client of mine, and he's a customer of several vendors. He, there's one company that he really likes and one company that he's okay with, doesn't like, doesn't really, is neutral about. And he was talking about how one of the things that he said that's important to him was support earlier. But one company kept pushing, hey, let me show you how to use our product. And the other company tried to build a relationship with them and show them that they will support it. The engagement was important. Guess who they went with? They went with the customer who listened. So what is valuable or important? Again, we're not doing the presentation. We're not building the document. But if we share this information with the salesperson, they can build a presentation or the document around it to share with the customer. Um, so something here, it's called the bill of material. I, I guess I can put that here. BOM. <coughs> BOM stands for bill of material in case you're asked. And it's basically the list of all the part numbers that are required by the customer and also how to defend it, right? Um, cause sometimes during the conversations with the customers, we see that, all right, they need option A, B, C, D, E, and F, G. And now it's a $3 million deal. Customers don't have $3 million. Excuse me. So now the customer will want to remove some stuff off of the bill of material. And that's part of the negotiation. Now, as a sales engineer, our job is to tell the, the salesperson what is important on the bill of material. What can they live with, can they live without and what's a need to have? Like if they buy option A without option B, then option A is rendered useless and they really need option A. So they have to buy both, for example. Option C does this little thing that they were mentioned in passing, we can remove. So all these things, the salesperson will not know. And that's the job of the SE to help them understand. So that's the basic role of a sales engineer in the proposal. Now in the negotiation, again, it's, it's pretty much similar <clears throat> because if we do our meetings with the customers, what negotiation is all about value. It's all about what's important to the customer is the, the price we're putting on our solution worth the, the worth paying by the customer to solve their problem as in are is their problem costing them more than our solution if their problem is costing less than our solution then they wouldn't pay us and that's one two if if it is more important then our job as a sales engineer and i've said that multiple times i'm going to write it down here separately and that's true for anything you do in life every time and as he opens their mouth, they are either adding value or removing value from a deal. So we're not actually negotiating with the customers as sales engineers, the salesperson is magenta. The salesperson is doing the negotiation, but Throughout the discovery, the demo, the proof of concept, all this, every time we meet the customer, if we took them to lunch after the demo, if we took them to happy hour after the P, uh, POC, POV, every time we meet with them, whatever we say about our product is either going to add value or remove value from our product. It will either add, add value or remove value for them from the deal. 
So if we can show that, hey, our product, yes, is expensive. You want 3% off. But if you remove that 3% off and you we won't sell it to you, you're, it's costing you a lot more to not buy it. And that's that's our job. And again, through this proposal, we're helping the bill of we're helping the the sales person do the negotiation. And if you're interested in negotiation a little bit, just so you have a brief overview, generally speaking, the negotiation is its own cycle. Um, or there's multiple stages of negotiation. <clears throat> there is, and it, it's different with every company, but I would say negotiation starts with like the immediate manager or the person that I request in the product or the first person you talk to, let's say <coughs> first contact. And I'll write first. So it could be a sales manager. It could be a sales. What am I talking? It could be a user. Usually it's not a user. It could be a first line manager, a second line manager, a director, a VP, whoever. So it could be <clears throat> anyone in the chain. But generally speaking, after the first contact, like there, there could be another another part of the negotiation that's happening and this is not you doing it this is the salesperson doing it so i just want to clarify that and it could be the salesperson the sales manager and the sales director like the entire team involved could be product management as well <clears throat> some companies have negotiation teams as in <laughs> the customers negotiating with the sales team the sales team is negotiating with the pricing team within the internal company and then all that it, it's not really important for sales engineers to know but it's good to know in case you're looking for a job and you want to have a conversation uh uh c level or vp or who whoever it is so let's say the first contact was with a director the second person we're negotiating with is a higher as a vp uh higher that's not how you write higher higher vp and then there's procurement. And if you want to think about procurement, think of them as the anti salespeople. The, the salesperson's entire job is to close the deal at a, as high a price as possible. The procurement's job is to close the deal as, at as low a cost as possible. But like if the if the users and the VP all want the product, the procurement has to find a way to close the deal. It's when you get here, you're getting to the point where and if you have the budget, if you don't have the budget, then you like you're kind of out of luck. But when you're here, the procurement has to close the deal mostly, but they also are rewarded or their performance is based on how many points or percent discount they can get on an opportunity or on a deal. I hope that's making sense. I'm not showing my screen. I've been talking for a half hour. All right. So negotiation, first contact, higher VP procurement. That's the negotiation cycle, if you will. And the role of the SE is basically to prepare the salesperson to meet all these people by showing them the value of the product, what would happen if they don't buy the product, what can be removed from the bill of material, what just happened. All that information is useful for the sales team or the, yeah, for the negotiation. So that's it for that. The last thing I want to talk about today is the handoff. The implementation is usually done by, by somebody else. There's an implementations team. If your SEs are doing the implementation, then you're doing it wrong. But 
when you, when it comes to implementation from closing the deal, you just negotiated, you close the deal. There has to be a handoff from the sales team. So let me see if I can draw something here. Will this work? So this part is the sales team. Bam. My my this is done by the SDR team, SDR slash sales. This is the sales team, and that includes like is equal to the sales team is equal to sales plus SE. And here's it could it's different in different companies, could be customer success. Yeah, like customer success. Right. Some companies have customer success. Some companies have TAMS, which stand for technical account manager. And some companies have like advocates, they're called advocates. Or it could be simply project managers who are there to, like, I used to work for Akata Lucent. After the negotiation is done, then Akta Lucent is a networking company. So a company like Verizon Wireless or some big networking company is buying thousands of routers and switches. They're buying design services on top of it. Someone has to manage this entire project. It could be customer success or more often than not, it was a product a project project manager along with the account team, because when we talk about enterprise, like I said, in the past, the sales team don't just sell something and go away. They keep working with that customer because this customer this year, they bought thousands of routers next year. Guess what? They're going to buy a thousand more routers or that's the plan. That's the hope. That's the goal. So. That's happening. So how does the handoff happen? Well, someone has to meet, right? If it's a company like Verizon Wireless buying from Alcatel Lucent, which doesn't exist anymore, that's part of another company, then there are launch meeting after uh, sync up meeting after update meeting. There's always these meetings that are taking place between the sales team, the sales team, the implementations team, the customer side, the product, man the project manager, there's continuous meetings all the time to make sure that the, the project is progressing. And if that doesn't exist, I've been in projects where the deal is closed. They ask me to do a network design and then nothing happens. It just stalls. They wait there, wait there, wait there. And all of a sudden they say, Hey Ramsey, we need the design by tomorrow. No, sir. I would have already done the design. They say we need to modify the design by tomorrow and have it implemented by the end of the week or something like that. I might be exaggerating. I can't exactly remember, but that's how it feels like to me. So that that's not going to happen. Someone dropped the ball. So, but the process of handoff should be if it's a small customer and not an enterprise customer, there should be a meeting between I want to make this bigger. Should be a meeting between sales team, the customer success team, or whoever's doing the, 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 whoever's taking over with the customer, with the launch plan already built, right? So SE should have worked with the customer success or the TAM ahead of time to, uh, to make sure they understand what the customer wants. The biggest failure I've seen is when, when this is done, the sales, let's go back here. When the sales part is done, this part, well, can I move this? Anyway, 
Right. Yeah, when the sales part done, there's like this part in in black. Let me change the color then. When this part is done, the sales team just drops off the face of the earth. And now the customer success is supposed to implement and provide post sales support. And that never happens. Right? And the, another mistake that I see customer success people do is that once the sale is done, <clears throat> they don't actually reach out to the customer until it's time to renew and say like, Hey, I'm your new salesperson. Buy from me. Would you want to quote to re to renew? The subscription or something like that so there are different things that happen but these are the most basically just meetings with a customer customer success or whoever is involved in the post sales part and whoever was involved in the selling part to make sure that everybody's on the same page and everything can be implemented and that should be documented whatever was offered during the pre-sales should be documented so that everybody's on the same page that's what I wanted to talk about today. If you have any thoughts about things you want me to talk about in the future, please leave a comment. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave it. Uh, whether it's right now or if you're watching this video afterwards, please make sure to leave your questions so I can answer them. Also, if you want to be featured on a on a random podcast video, if you want to send me any questions, you can send me a video question I can, can or, or an audio question or a text question because I want to do a couple of podcasts where it's just me answering your questions, not what I think are your questions. It's kind of like sales. So that's it for today. It is fairly late. It is almost 9 o'clock my time. I thank you for listening. I thank you for being here. And if there aren't any other questions, I'm signing off. Good night.